Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Tull. Before we get into it, I need to point you in the way of our Patreon, patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast, where we do our bonus episodes on a Monday, live stream episodes on a Friday, and a whole lot more in between. There's specials on there, there's live podcasts uh, that we've done in front of a live audience, there's everything over there, patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. I'm on tour everywhere. And the tickets are on sheantalkcomedy.com, all the local stuff, and then I'm just coming all over the world. So oh. that, <laughs> <laughs> the, so there's t- t- the Opera House tickets are up there, the uh, the UK stuffs up there. Uh, hopefully some European dates: Canada, America, New Zealand, Australia, Dubai. All the tickets are up there, and Dubai, Dubai tickets for it. <laughs> We're sponsored by Part of Switch. Part of Switch is, and you were just asking me there, it's an energy, and I told you, it's an energy comparison site that helps households in Northern Ireland compare and switch their energy suppliers. It's the only energy service in Northern Ireland that will compare deals across all suppliers and take care of the switch as well. And they don't even need to do that, but that's a nice touch. That's a touch of class. In 2023, customers of Part of Switch have saved an average of £369 annually on their energy bills. Look, you know nowadays... Everyone's trying to everyone's trying to shaft you. You know these energy these energy companies, big energy. But with uh, with part of switch, they just make it easier just to find the right deal. You go to part. I I'm on there all the time. You go to part of switch. uk to find out how much you can save, or click on the link in the description of this episode. It might be time to switch, and part of switch give you the part to do that. And you can save a lot of money. Three hundred sixty nine pound on average. Boom Julie. boom boom. What would you do with three hundred sixty nine pound? Oh, pounds? go mad. <laughs> 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 we are also sponsored by Manscaped. And always remember, Monday night is pubes night. <laughs> you see? All off. All off on a Monday night. And it's darn good. It's very good. Your Does hair, the job. Your hair must grow pretty quick to every Monday after you Well, you have to keep things in check, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Look, they've got everything. Look, everyone in this couch uses it. Um, we were comparing a minute ago. They've got uh, ball cleanser, ball deodorant, the lawnmower. They've got beard trimmers. You know, if you're a guy with a beard like Dave Elliott, uh, they've got beard oil. They've got everything you need. The number one in men's below the belt grooming. Go to Manscaped.com. Use your code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Three Three advocates of it here. Manscaped.com And then your Monday nights will be pubes night too <laughs> I would love it if at the height of UTV you were really doing that um, My guests, oh, this need no real introduction uh, My guests are my friend Dave Elliott, stand-up comedian, uh, writer Serious actor Father? Nah, Philanthropist? Yeah. No, you hate all oh, that no, I hate Charlie yeah. Dave Elliott and... Uh, Third time on the podcast, a hat trick. Yes, th- three times. Julian, very seems. lucky boy. Yep, Julian, lovely jacket, looking very dapper. You always put us all. You always put us to shame when you come in here. Not we're at casual. All. We're casual. Not at all. Do you do you ever dress down like does Julian ever rock like a juicy couture tracksuit or? N- uh, certainly not. <laughs> we bit of allure, no? Well, sure, it was casual on ma- when I saw you on Monday. Oh, we had. Let me tell you, we had a very local showbiz lunch. Sorry. <laughs> Where did you have it? In, in, in the club. Uncle Troy in. Troy in. Darling. What? No, you, we just we thought you were busy, didn't we, Julian? We, thought we did. We could oh, only I get a table for two. I wasn't. I mean, if you're into your local showbiz, what a sight that was to see us having. Dan, is that a new mug? <laughs> Tea with me live, Shane Todd. You see, you've got Plus. mugs. Well, I had mugs years ago on UTV, but not anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Julian, we had a lovely lunch, and can I just say I'm glad it wasn't uh, the table wasn't bugged. Uh, and can I tell you, showbiz chat. I was taking you out to lunch and then you left early. And when I got up to pay, you'd pay. That's it. Touch of From now on, I'm doing it. And Touch I'm going to pay before you arrive. Touch a class. <laughs> if you ever me. go out with me again, of course. Touch a class. I would love I it if that don't. was. It. I hope you don't go out again. You, can co- you come next time. Of course you're I welcome. Will. Of course you're welcome. Thank you. Well, but it was on a Monday, wasn't it? So we know you would have been in a bit of a state down there. So <laughs> I don't know. It was on Tuesday. <laughs> That's when we go for lunch. Um, Julia, thanks for coming on again. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure. pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here, Dave. I feel like yeah. I haven't seen you in so long. I know. I feel. I. I, I feel like we look like. 
where where we scally and a social worker sat on the sofa. You know, I yeah. look like I've been a bad boy. Oh, how much would you love it if he was your social worker? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I would love that. In fact, I don't know. No. I don't think that they'll allow me to be a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, well, you you also said we you both look like you're naughty boys getting told off by the yeah the young prince. We I, I was at the headmaster's office. Headmistress, the f- first headmistress I had was an oh she was like say it, Julian sorry she was like widow twanky you know that's what she looked like a man in drag and any time you were talking to her, she would say I doubt it not. I doubt it not, you know, and that, that sort of stuck with me. Were you in trouble in school quite a bit? Quite, quite a bit, yes. Cause talking in class and also being thick with maths. I ah, was, snap! I, I, I could write, write you a nice essay. I mean, would you believe I was good at divinity? What's like that? me, d- a religious ed- education. Oh, yeah, me, yeah, religious education. Yeah. I don't. For some reason, I I sort of shone at it. <laughs> I'm not a religious person, yeah. but uh, and that's what I was good at. And a bit of geography, I was good at. Right. What's the capital of Finland? Helsinki. There, see, also you can't. You, he will get yeah. it all because you 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 work the airline industry. You know places. Well, I I, I grabbed at that. Is Helsinki? Yes, but would you, uh, would you prefer basalt or granite? Just not basalt or granite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, 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 granite's the harder, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Dave, were you in trouble at school? Oh, I was a bad boy, yeah. No, you weren't. No, no, you weren't. You weren't a bad, a bad boy. boy. Yeah. You were not a bad boy. I was a senior prefect, but I was a bad boy. I was a bad prefect. prefect. Yeah. If you're a prefect, there was no way you were a bad boy. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I could weed out the bad boys you know like when you, I'm like an informant you were you know, brought in by the yeah. teachers because they're like this bad boy needs tamed yeah. he can lead us but always boys. remember bad boys are more fun <laughs> exactly <laughs> you, I Julian, would love if you were my principal I, could, I just couldn't see I, I can principal see, I can see you just a t- or teacher I can just see you having like a fun environment you know well that, that's what I would try to work on with my pupils, but I mean, they wouldn't have me as a teacher. Would you not have done like, so when I was at Belfast Met, we had people from the TV industry and that sort of thing who came Aiden in. Aidan Brown, for instance. Aidan Brown, Jackie, Jackie Barkley. Bar- Jackie Barkley. Would brilliant. you not love to do something like that? Uh, Matt, what a treat that would be for the students. Yes, I would have to have the knowledge to impart to them. <laughs> oh, you do. Proper teaching knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I haven't maybe got the skills to impart right. the information, but I would love being with them, yes. Like, what would you... When people come to you and they say, Julian, I want to be a TV presenter, I want to do, you know, continuity and I want to do all that kind of stuff, what's your, like, top line bit of advice for them? Well, I've said what you've got to remember on TV, which I didn't at the start... You've got to be yourself. I tried to model myself on people I'd seen on London Weekend Television and Thames Television, those announcers, and that doesn't work. You've got to be yourself and don't try to impart or or give over that you're an intelligent person, which of course I'm not. But (laughs) I, I, I enjoyed just being myself and that was easier for me. That's kind of the same with comedy though, isn't it? Like, yeah. At the start, nobody's you're, you're trying to emulate people that you like, oh, and God, yes. and then when you find your voice, mm-hmm. that's yeah. great. Because I used to, whenever I started, would wear like you know mascara, have my hair all up and stuff, and had the wee scarves on, and would run about. Oh, look at me! Whereas now I'm just myself. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So. You, were, you, Russell Chris, Russell, Russell, Russell Crowe. I thought you were going to say, yeah. <laughs> yes. but no, not Russell. Um, yeah, I, I think in stand up massively like I, I wasn't myself at the start and then when you just hit that you used to stride. dress like Shaggy not Shaggy but Shaggy from Scooby Doo when you started like <laughs> hold you had the, on you had the bow can, we do, can we run that yeah. back and talk about how awful that Shaggy impression that was that was a great Shaggy do it again oh, what did I say <laughs> <laughs> wasn't me but the the Shaggy from Scooby Doo like you had the, the bowl hair I actually have it when you ring my phone you pop up with your wee bowl, bowl haircut. What do you mean a bowl haircut? Yeah, like a bowl haircut. You, you know who you look like? You look like Shaggy slash Nicholas Lindhurst. You look, that was kind of the thing. Oh, you look like Rodney. Before. You look like know. Rodney. And you wore Young these, Rodney, like, is that you what you like these, when like, I did stand 1980s Granda jumpers yeah. and flares. And it was just weird. Because now you're this immaculate guy with the perfect hair. Yeah. And you, 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 you love your fashion. But then you look like... Rodders. You Rodders. <laughs> <laughs> you like I Rodders. did a fashion show with you at Queen's University, and you co-hosted Did. it with me and Jackie Barkley. Yep, yep. Uh, and, and I was wearing a... And you were very trendy then. Yep, yep, yep. I'd found fashion by then, but Dave is right. I mean, 
the sort of stuff I was wearing back in the day when I started stand because you just you're young, you're experimenting with fashion, you don't know what to wear. Um, I mean, like you had been alive. Yeah. Like you know, you know some clothes to wear. Yeah. Like, yeah. why did you raid your grandfather's wardrobe? <laughs> like, I'm going on stage now, and he'd look like a pensioner. What happened? In there? memorium of him. That's oh. why. <laughs> to show a bit of respect. Yeah. Well, they were so bad. He should have taken those clothes with him. Were you allowed, Julian, on UTV? Could you just? Were you in charge of whatever you wore, or were they sort of telling you it um, needs to be this and that? It had to be a certain style of. You always had to have a tie. That's why I never wear a tie now. I think I told you the other day, I've got a wardrobe full of hangers with, with ties on that I don't wear. Yeah. But uh, you had to then. And on high days and holidays, dinner suit and dicky bow, you know, for Christmas. And, would, you, would you wear shorts underneath that? Or would, could no, you already see in your top you half? You felt you wanted to because it, some, it used to get quite hot in there. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I felt you've got to have the total look or you don't feel right. Yeah. Some people used to come in with jeans on and and uh, name uh, names no no i can't but <laughs> as but, if that would be the worst <laughs> uh, <laughs> no but the thing is uh, uh, that doesn't work for me you've got to have the whole look or don't do it yeah i i thought about wearing a suit for stand-up for a while I, I think everyone's tried it at some point nearly i tried it and it just no i just felt like it was yes, you told me when you were going to the event on monday night that you were going to be casual yeah, and you like to be the, casual. I was hosting the BBC New Comedy Awards. I'd, I'd have thrown on a blazer for stuff before, but just you feel yeah. stuffy in it when you're on stage and stand up. Well, you do, you but coach. I, I mm-hmm. think it gives an air of occasion when it's a, a dress suit or a yeah a, a dinner suit and dicky bow. What's the weirdest thing you've worn for stand up? Well, the thing I wore in my last Ulster Hall show it was like a t-shirt, rugby shirt, made of wool. And it was really long. It was too warm. It was no. It was actually short, so anyone could see my belly. And I was too long right. in sleeves because short arms. And I was hot the whole way through, so it wasn't comfortable. I didn't enjoy myself, and I just like that would be a problem if he was on TV doing continuity announcing. He sweats aggressively. Yeah. Ooh, I just aggressively. Well, I did at the start. It's nerves does that, yeah. but then then you'll get out of the way of, and you, you'll not be sweating. Yeah. No, it's yeah. a problem for you. Like you have. No, no, no. Issue. No, I'm okay. You know, I'm all right. Now. No, but you have like. There's an un- there's a re- obviously like an underlying thing there. Yeah, thyroid, do- yeah, The first time I met Dave was at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, mm-hmm. and he's the only white guy I've ever met who would walk about with a white towel around his neck oh. permanently. I mean yeah. permanently. Well, it was he would, hot summer. He would dab himself. Like, a oh, long, hot Edinburgh. summer in yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. That's unusual because <laughs> normally you're foundered even in August. The wind comes off the Firth of Forth, blows up Princess Street, <laughs> and there cuts you in two <laughs> in August. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You well, know? it was a hot summer, that one. Julian, what's your shorts. favourite, like, UK or Irish city? Not here, where you would go and visit. Well, having said, I adore Edinburgh. Too hilly. Too, too hilly. Too hilly? Oh, yeah. No, I quite like the hill. And at the, up by the castle, After a there's, few scoops. A, there's a fabulous restaurant called The Witchery, right near the entrance to the castle, and it's really fabulous. Yeah. Good food and everything. So I... Dave, they're asking me if you could get a bigger drink. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was going <laughs> to... <laughs> if Just Stop Oil saw that, they would try and stop it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just put this back on the truck. That's a hefty one, isn't it? Yeah, oh, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, Not as hefty as you think. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Edinburgh is nice, and I like that it's old. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's historic. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's just... That novelty wears off because sometimes we go do the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. You're there mm-hmm. for the whole month. The novelty of the medieval type element of the city yeah. wears off because oh, everyone. And I love the brickwork of the city and everything. Yeah, and also the people. They're so so nice. And I like Northern Irish people, of course. Julian, where don't you like like around the world? Like where's someone you've been? Where's someone, you've, where's, where's someone you've been? Where's someone you don't? What's Are we talking about people here? I'm talking about people in London who <laughs> walk up Oxford Street yes. and you're going down the way and. They will not step out of your... You've got to go round them. So I'm walking down Oxford Street and I stop dead. And then they have to walk round me. Because I'm thinking, you ignorant... So and so. But, you know, really, uh, yeah. uh, it, London is the worst, I think. For Last time we were in London, we had a, uh, I had a full, had a full English in Soho at 2am. Well, well, that's remember? decent enough. I yeah. no, absolutely don't. Oh, you weren't there. The live party. Mm-hmm. Oh no, you weren't there. Oh no, so disrespectful. There was a, there's like a 24 hour really nice restaurant, the Soho yeah. House yes. own, and it's and we I was having like in Soho I was having a big sausage at like two yeah. in the morning. Well, we'd be the only person in Soho, but the thing with it, you <laughs> right, you know what he said to me, Julian. I want I want to get your take on this. We oh, no. he Here started we. going to London at the start, and he was like. 
does doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter about stand what up. What doesn't matter anymore? Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. He just said it doesn't matter. He wanted anymore. out of it at this no, stage. No, he just said, look, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to bring you with me, and we'll just go here as friends every time I go. Yeah. Been twice, and he's ditched me now. Yeah. Don't bring me anymore. And we had our moment. We were on the rickshaw. We went to McDonald's. We did lovely. get a rickshaw to McDonald's. Yeah. We wanted to go GAY. We did because I'd never yeah, been. That's brilliant. Uh-huh. That's it, brilliant. Because we always talk about it. It's one of yeah. these things because we're old dad guys. We go, yeah. oh, we're going to go to London. We're going to do the gig. Then we're going to go GAY and just have a load of fun. And then yeah. by the time it hits about 10 No, 30, but the last time I was ready on. for bed. Ready for but bed. The last oh, time, for God. The last time I was on. Ready for, I was not ready for bed. I was ready to go. <laughs> You're going to cry. But then <laughs> he was like, oh, we can't go to GAY. It's too late. And I was like, I want to go to GAY. You wouldn't take me. Are you serious? What are you going to do with that banana? <laughs> <laughs> it's all peeled and ready to go, and you're not sticking it in anywhere. <laughs> I'm sticking it in my gob. Oh, that's it. What's the start? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to have any luck there, Julian. Apologies. Um, well, you're all right. I'm Julian, what's horse. GAY like? Is it like a big fun place? Uh, uh, certainly. And I've been to, you know, under under Charing Cross Station. The Is that a euphemism? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's the biggest disco. It really is. <laughs> I right. thought you were going somewhere else. <laughs> no, no, no. Not at this particular moment in time. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, GAY just seems like a great night out. And then... Soho in general. Well, we had a great night out even in the McDonald's at Soho. Yeah. That was a really good time. And that's the square for your Yeah. We have a nice time, Julian, but like, you're more like, your taste is more refined than ours. How you know do what you mean? mean? Like, you love, lu- you're. Can I be refined? Because you're luxury. You're all about luxury. There's no way you're in McDonald's at Soho at two in the morning. Well, I'm 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 on luxury at staff discount. Remember, yeah, in right. the airline industry, yep. I'm traveling with my friends and I'm on staff tickets and I may be in luxurious places but it's all a discounted price what's it what's a what's a country or a city that you like abroad that you, you would you hate country, where do you have a bad relationship a with? country that I hate or like somewhere you've been had a terrible experience um I had a friend who was au pairing in Germany once and I went to see her at this this village outside Frankfurt flew to Frankfurt and travelled for hours on the train to get to her and uh, she, uh, where she and the people she was working with are very nice the rest of it oh god creepy you know this this village or Germany in general the whole people and everything it was like a Frankenstein <laughs> is it one of those places you go to and like everyone knows each other so when you're the new person going into they're all That's giving you a look and the height of the day was going for hot chocolate in the cafe right and all beautifully served and everything but you're sitting with all these people all looking at you and think oh no no where have, where have you been like where's somewhere you've travelled to and you go I'm a hit here where have you travelled a bit of attention you go yes I, I don't like to feel I'm a hit anywhere no but I mean I mean I mean you go where people are friendly mm-hmm. and I suppose uh, where everybody is friendly is in Bangkok in Thailand mm-hmm. Bangkok <laughs> it's never not funny mm-hmm. <laughs> when were you there last? about five years ago and talk me through like I've seen obviously you've seen it on TV and that kind of thing what's the what's I've seen the what on TV you've seen that strip in Bangkok I'm oh, not yes. sure what it's called are you talking manscaping again <laughs> yes <laughs> um, but you see like you know the bars and that kind uh-huh, of thing yes. and that sort of, so what's the night out we're in Bangkok it's 5 o'clock we're having a bit of dinner what's the evening oh, not the at 5 o'clock 5 o'clock in the evening yeah no you're you're still out at that stage maybe having a couple of drinks somewhere right. and then you come home and have a shower and get ready to go out what's your and tipple, remember sorry? you're going out into hot humid sticky weather what's my tipple uh-huh. uh, white wine or sparkling mineral water because alcohol knocks me for six every time right like pina colada I have a pina colada and you could take you could do an operation on me after one pina colada uh-huh. and I wouldn't know about it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had it. Okay, we're going for a late dinner. Right. Where do we go? Maybe to uh, the, my favorite place in Thailand was bed supper. And you go in and everybody's on a big bed and the whole crew would be on a big ba- bed and there's uh, people and there's girls walking about in ballerina outfits serving drinks. Cool. And bringing bringing you the food. There's a set menu, but it's it's very good. And then 
by the time you get to coffee, the beat is starting to come up and the place is starting to vibrate. It's two or three levels. And <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? <laughs> and no, but it, 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 there's a, a good buzz going. And so the disco then starts and it's brilliant. What kind of attention would me and Dave get if we were walking down the main strip in Thailand half ten on a Saturday night? You'd probably get a lot of ladies of the night wanting to take you up the back entry. Nice. You know, to do what? <laughs> what? But we're not <laughs> yeah. going to that now. But that, that's, it's very prevalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you, you get g- g- girls and guys coming up to you, but you just politely refuse them. Now, have you ever se- like been? Have I ever a, what? Have you ever been in a situation mm-hmm. like that where you see someone you know and then they'd be mortified? Only other members of the crew. Right, right, right. You know, I've, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, oh. I've come across people that uh, people have come up to me in Bangkok. Hello, Julian. How are you doing? What are you doing here? Yeah. And they're maybe on their way to Australia or they're they're working or whatever. But I mean, that's good. That, that that's nice to see people that know you. What were you gonna say? I forgot that you were talking about the airplane crew, and I just thought you were referring to like your your man, mate, man, them, the posse the crew. Yeah. You do have a posse you travel with. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. That's the dream, isn't it? To just, you know, be older and just go on holidays with your mates still. Because that's a, that's a thing I fear I'm going to lose. As soon as I'm the, not going to lose that. No, but you just... lose friends right quick and we can kid, he's going. I just mean... I just mean... This, the only way we can get away at the minute is a stag. Stag do. That's the only way we can get away. And then you'll get blitzed and you don't know where you are. Well... Yeah, yes. Well, you you think you're going to w- go away in a mad stag. The maddest thing that happened on my stag, we went to Magaluf. Apologies, I've told this story before. Went to Magaluf. Dave had just had his first daughter at this point, and he was, I could see he was really sad, and he was missing her. Um, and so I went, we were drunk, obviously, and I went down the strip in Magaluf, found this gift shop, bought him a gift to cheer him up. But I bought, like, a replica child, like a like a doll. A doll, mm. not a replica child. Yeah. <laughs> it's the doll. I bought a doll for him of, like, a little girl. <laughs> Like a and, gave it, and gave it 20 euro so it was a good quality material and I gave it to him and he did was you really carry that round with you yeah. then hey, the whole night we were in BCM watching DJ Sammy and Dave was cradling yeah. we the baby. baby and he was really oh, well, happy yeah. well that's that. good you, that was a very thoughtful thing to do you've been Magaluf uh, yes I have good spot it was good yes it was good at the time <laughs> yes. yeah yeah if don't you, know whether I'd appreciate it now but I would I would try it yeah 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 what about the Algarve yeah I've been in the Algarve a lot yes yeah. you're just back yeah. 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 Julian, why were you really yeah. aggressive yeah. the day so <laughs> uh, You want to fight him? <laughs> and I was in Albafira, there was just outside actually there. Uh-huh. It was nice. And then myself and a friend went away a couple myself, my wife and my kids and my mate and his wife and their kids. Ugh. And we sort of had split nights out. So I was able to go out for one night with my wife and then I got a night out with him. So it was like my mate. And we were like, Well let's go to the strip and Albafira because we oh, right. We haven't been since we were 18. But you were going to club And on never has there been two older guys anywhere. We looked like we were two... Undercover cops. Perverts, yeah. Nice. Um, Côte d'Azur. Oh, old beautiful. Town. Old town's fabulous. Oh, nice. nice is a lovely spot. Mm. Nice is a lovely spot. Big See, that's kind of why we came here to him, because his, his mum and dad used to have a wee apartment there. Wow. And then I was yeah. like, brilliant, be mates with him. He'd be like, oh, come to mum mm. and dad's other house. But then it never really materialised. No. And I'm too far in now to know him. Or I can't <laughs> like back stuck. out or anything. Yeah. Um, Julian, who's your best friend in the world? <coughs> Me. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I, I, I've got a lot of friends, but I always think, you know, uh, to get anything done or you need help, I'm the one I rely on. Yeah. Have you yeah. always been like that? Yeah, I have been, yes. I, I've got, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of very good friends. I mean, uh, the w- ones I was with in Corfu last week, Five friends that I've known since I started in, in the travel industry, and we've been friends ever since, and that wasn't yesterday. Yeah. You know, but we have a good time, and we ha- nearly have our own language. For, like, codes, code words and things yeah, on Communicating, night. you know, and all that sort of thing. Okay. Like... What, uh, what, what if you're in a situation you need to get out of? If I need to go to the washroom, for instance, to say, I say to them, I've got to go and do my enumerations. Because you know the way kids in Northern Ireland have to do my numbers, Mum. I yeah. offer to do my numbers. Well, we say enumerations. Right. So it um, covers a multitude then. Do you, have you gotten yourself into any embarrassing scenarios abroad or just, do you get yourself into embarrassing situations in general? You seem like very calm and measured. 
Well, I've been in many embarrassing situations, especially at Heathrow, dealing with all aspects of the human condition. But the very <laughs> worst, the very worst embarrassing situation, I don't even know whether I can talk about it on here. Yeah, you, you can, can. You can say anything on here. To, it's right. Julian, no. you're free from the shackles of UTV. You can say whatever okay. you want. Right. I, in the Air Canada office in North Street in Belfast, uh, this is on a, 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 an autumn evening where it's getting dark. Mm. Uh, the two ladies that work with me, one is doing trips around the travel agencies in the north of the province, and the other one's taking a late lunch and gone to Marks and Spencer's. There's a woman coming in to get tickets to, to go to a funeral in Toronto tomorrow. It's quarter to five. She hasn't come, and I'm busting to go to the toilet. <laughs> or do your enumerations. Enumerations, <laughs> yes. So I thought, oh, frick, I'll just go now. So I locked the officer ran down the corridor to the men's room uh -huh. a one or two julian just a one or two a, a pp a or one poo -poo? okay a one no yeah a one <laughs> so i go into the washer it's dark <laughs> and i go click doesn't work click 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 no light whatsoever so i thought frig so i feel my way into the cubicle <laughs> and i get in and i think yeah. I'm going to have to sit on this because I can't really see. It's pitch black. So I thought I'd better sit on it just to be so. <laughs> That's quite the policy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this, you know, sitting down to piss isn't really on. Anyway, so I, I, so I, I drop my trousers. And I'm in Air Canada uniform, right? Uh -huh. Drop my trousers, sit on the toilet, pish. And with that here, thump, thump. And it's the doors at the top and the, and the footsteps. I thought, here's the wee woman. So, and then they hear knocking on the door. Hello, Air Canada? Air Canada? I said, frig. So I jump up, pull up my trousers, and I knew then that something was horrendously wrong. <laughs> horrendous. And I thought, oh my God. And I opened the door of the <laughs> toilet to let the light in from the corridor. And I turned round, and somebody had shat all down the front of the toilet. And as I'd pulled up my trousers, I'd scooped it all into my <laughs> underpants. So I'm standing with somebody else's shite in my underpants. And I thought, what the frig? And it was green, green. And I thought, what the frig am I going to do? And lower Kennedy, jeez. So to take my trousers off, take my shoes off, my and I've got me underpants and I'm doing the back of my legs and stand with these under I thought what am I going to do with it so I flung them out the window down into the car park went and pulled my trousers up and rushed up the corridor to the wee woman who was furious and I said I'm terribly sorry I was in the wash I didn't like to say I got shite all down whole underpants full of somebody else's shite and, and, and I had to deal with it and then I had to go home on the train thank god it was a cold night because there were no fragrances I stood oh. in the corridor anyway. <laughs> I mean, that's, but that's... that was the most horrendous thing. After that, everything else is a doddle. Yeah. The thing is, no one's going to believe you whenever you tell them that. Oh, <laughs> it's not my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've scooped somebody else's. Oh. And, 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 you put, scooped it all in. About four big tablespoonfuls. At some point, Lady, you pull up your trousers. <laughs> well, I, I, did, I did violently that day because I... Because the wee one was in a state, obviously. And when did you know that you had cold <laughs> shit in your butt? Well, when I, I felt something was cold on the back of my legs. So when I opened the door and let the light in, I then saw it was shite. And there's nothing worse than seeing somebody else's shite in your underpants. <laughs> When you've still got them on. You know. What's worse than finding a, a worm in your apple? <laughs> <laughs> Someone else is shouting. Absolutely. That tops everything. So everything at, at Heathrow, and I dealt with so many situations, that was a doddle. Yeah. Can I just say, I have a friend who <laughs> shits in the front of the toilet. No, he doesn't. He ever in Air Canada offices. I have a friend who had for years on his own stag do. He had got a real bad stomach. And he had, we had come back and found that he was lying in the bed with shit all over himself. Oh. And he is adamant that another one of our mates came back, took his boxers off, shit in them and put them back on him. And even oh. when we say, he's like, no, no, that did happen. <laughs> yeah. And now I kind of feel like maybe I believe. Is that the same mate that uh, gets totally naked to go to the toilet? He was apparently the culprit who took the boxers and right, shit in them. Right, yeah, right. but the right, guy yeah. who... Um, the guy who stag it was, yeah. See, actually, on flights, working for Air Canada, did you ever have to go and <sighs> say someone was in the toilet for a long time? 
I did, yes. No. And get them out. Because a video's done, and, and obviously it's not the first time it's happened, it happens all the time, I'm sure. There was an EasyJet flight, and it's, of course nowadays everyone films everything. Mm. EasyJet attendant had to go down, unlock the toilet, opens it, this is all being filmed. There was a man and woman in there, um, you know. Changing you know, his lens. And three lenses. They were uh, having, you know, Bucking. sex. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and everyone Not saw that. Not in an easy jet toilet. On an easy jet toilet. Uh, there's titchy. Like on the 747, the one right at the back of the aircraft is L shaped. You can lie on the floor on that. <laughs> you can do the whole business <coughs> properly. Not sitting in the wash hand basin or anything. But in an easy jet toilet. I know. I mean, let's face it, in the front washroom, <coughs> being a guy, you've got. Uh, no, no, it's, it's this is This is educational. You've for got to be like a limbo dancer to pish. Yeah, because you've got you know, the water, the aircraft's coming down, and like you're to lean back like that. To yeah, <laughs> uh, what did you have? You, what was the worst thing you discovered on a flight? Uh, arrival at Heathrow. I was on arrivals, and an aircraft came in, and this lady, uh, bigger boned, we shall say, bigger boned lady, went to the washroom. And did what she had to do, and then did her makeup on. She was sitting with her makeup on the toilet, and the aircraft was starting its descent into London. So maybe she was over the likes of Penzance when she sat on the toilet. It was getting nearer to London, and it was dropping, descending, descending. So the seatbelt sign went on, and she tried to get up to get off the toilet, but no, she had flushed it. So she was being sucked into the toilet, the pressure was different in the toilet to the outside of the cabin, and she was stuck on the toilet, so she had to sit there for the landing. <laughs> and I was, I was a meet and greet staff, and I had to go on and go back, and you had to be like somebody in a hospital. That The crew took the door off. Right. And I went along, I said, well, Mrs. Stoppenheimer, or whatever it was, I said, uh, very specific. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, uh, oh, this is terrible. I'm so embarrassed. I said, well, don't be. This sort of thing happens every now and again. I lied. And I said, uh, we're, we're going to get, get, get you sorted. And with that, a maintenance guy came beside me and he said, we'll get you out in a minute, love. And he'd got a, 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 gemma, a jemmy in his hand. And she thought, where the hell is he going to put that? But uh, he went down into the bowels of the aircraft and all of a sudden there was fshhh, and Mrs. Stoppenheimer was able to stand up and had a big rim round her. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate getting out? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice touch from the air cabin and stuff. No. <laughs> big red ring round her buttocks, which I couldn't help but look at as she turned round to do herself up. <laughs> People, um, I've left so much stuff on a plane. Laptop, I, I've got a back most of the time, but like... Have you not got a bag? You can keep it in. Yeah, but I, oh, I'm an idiot. You're not like, a bag person. No, mm -hmm. if it's, say if it's a long haul flight, I've left like laptops, had to go back on and get it, and headphones and... I think you're the kind of guy that will agree with me on this, Julian. I have a wee bag now that I put around a wee strap and it's a wee no. small now. It's in next door. Please get it. Just get it, please. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah. Tell me if you think this bag is acceptable. <laughs> he, ah, see, I know what you're going to say. Because no I've got a bag that I wear when I'm abroad, and I would never, ever be seen dead in it in Belfast, even though it's Prada. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a small bag, but it's a bit too... It wouldn't be acceptable in Belfast to walk around with it. Is it like a crossbody bag? It can be crossbody or over the one shoulder. But uh, I, I use it when I'm abroad because I can keep my cards in it and everything, and everything is there. Right, Dave, put that on the way you wear it. This is, yeah. That's all right. See? Yeah, yeah it's okay if you wear maybe. But look at the way you wear Julian, he's wearing this just like yeah. to walk and do the podcast. You made me laugh too much, Julian, I need an inhaler. Right. So you'd wear that like yeah. that? Yes, I would wear it cross body. You look like you're in Top Boy. Yeah. The man, then? What do you keep I, in there? What I, does he keep I, in there? What do I keep in there? I've got my keys. I've got my wallet. I've got some tissues. You never know when yes, you need them. I have my phone, my glasses, and my card. Well, I have a thing on the on the strap which mm -hmm. fastens on, and I keep keep my cards and a few co uh, notes in there. 
right. and my glasses, of course. But when I'm abroad, I don't care because I, I tell myself nobody knows me. I've got a peak, a cap like that with a big peak on glasses and that over my shoulder, and I don't give a damn. Do you deal drugs on holidays? No, I do not. I do not. No, don't do any hat, drugs. The glasses of he doesn't work on his own. You said, you told me when we were having lunch you don't you, your sunbathing days are gone. Oh, don't I don't lie in the sun. But you're speaking to two big sun guys. Yes, well you love the sun at the moment and I appreciate that. But I've read too much about how bad it is for you and how there are so many <coughs> cancerous people at the moment that don't know they've got it. Yeah. And I mean, normally I would spray. I would have a spray tan before I go. So you, at least you look the part, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't lie. I'll walk on the beach and feet in the sea and all that, but I'm not lying it, no. When you did, what was your swimwear of choice? Speedos. As in brief or shorts? Well, they're brief. Yeah. Not the way they are now with the whole bottom out, you yeah. know? I mean, right. everybody now, fellas and girls, the whole bottom's out now. Yes. Whether yeah. you like it or not. Mm. Yeah. Some people may like it, others oh. don't. My dad's probably the only guy still rocking a Speedo. No, I think, I think dads would do that. My dad would. You think so? Yeah. Big Davies were yeah, in a Speedo. I, and I like short shorts in, yes. in the sun. I, I don't want my legs or those shorts that come down to below your knee. If I'm getting my legs out, I get my legs out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I had an embarrassing moment speaking of thongs, Julian, on my holidays. A thong? A thong. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't wear a thong. So I was out, out for dinner just with, with my family. With a thong <laughs> on? <laughs> Listen, I'm on my holidays, Julian. You wear the cap, the glasses, right. the bag, I wear thongs. That's banned from Tony Romas. But um, yeah, so uh, we were on our holidays and we were sitting for a family dinner at a poolside bar. And I was there with my family and then the other family who, who we were away with. And my, my, big, my big girl, my big five-year-old, lost two front teeth because she, she stepped out of line with me once too often and <laughs> um, no but their first teeth came out so she had these two these wee holes in her mouth god bless her and she came around to show me at dinner and as uh, she came, walked around the table with me i like looked over to the left of me and i went show us your hole like i had to look oh. at her tooth and her, like, whatever and as i turned back to the table everybody else at the table staring at me like what, what did you do are you doing <laughs> yeah. and i said what why and they go look and i look behind me and there's three three women standing at the bar all wearing bikinis but thongs with their bare bums out so oh. they thought i'd just gone yes. show, show us your show. home and if yeah, anyone please. looks like a broad they would be shouting show us your home yeah. yes. <laughs> it was right. we cross body bag yeah getting so us they, inhaler out so they <laughs> thought i was a full perv but only half thought yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um julian were you ever on a flight where they were transporting a prisoner Yes, I've had, I've had that, and I've I've been on flights where I've been asked to hold a kidney for departure and arrival, uh, in a box. It's being taken for banter. Or? No, no, it's being taken. It's it's going to a patient waiting for the kidney. It's just been oh. not transplanted, taken out of yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody who's passed away, and I'm holding the box with the kidneys and ice for t take off and landing. <laughs> now, when they were transporting a prisoner. What's the protocol for that? Are they handcuffed to, to someone? They are. They're hand, handcuffed <laughs> to somebody <clears throat> in plain clothes. Sometimes they're handcuffed between both. So that's a bad Are case. they still are getting they a meal? Both? Yes, they do get a meal. And the handcuff is taken off them to one side to be able to eat. What if they need to go to the toilet? They go, they're taken to the toilet by one of the accompanying st staff who's with them and they they wait outside and is there pl is there police on international flights not not police on some airlines especially from the gulf states there are a, f a full team of five bodyguards in plain clothes who we had to meet and then escort to airside to get their their guns exciting. back that'd be exciting and then then they would have the guns on the aircraft do you give them a nod and stuff on the plane when you're serving them food well you 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 know you don't be as blatant as that <laughs> you do <laughs> well, <about> you. Yeah. <laughs> how's your gun doing all right <laughs> no but all that you know you, you just you have to just be matter of fact about things yeah 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 i love to be an undercover uh plain clothes guy on the flight. worst guy they could ever be an undercover cop. <laughs> Big newspaper yeah. holes in it. <laughs> um, 
Dave, I was telling Julian when I had lunch with him that he should do like Stop telling me, reminding me of you and that he should do when we had our show about his lunch, that uh-huh. he uh, he should do like a one man show oh, about his career and about absolutely. his life. And then it, and he should do like forty five minutes of stories and then a Q and A at the end. How great yeah. would that be? Yes, that that, yeah. that would be I'd never thought of that, but that would be good. So I I don't know whether people would want to hear all my stories, you know. Julian. I've got I have got so many on I think you have I'll to take the shackles off the stories. Don't be worried I'll, about I'll, you see, I'm all still worried about I can't do that because I work for UTV, but that's dead now. It's gone. And I don't have to worry about UTV, but I'm still, that's still, I still feel that I'm telling a risque story. See, the second you came on here and told us about the, the flying dildos, there was no going back to UTV. <laughs> Unless they bring you back for that, you know, to do a show on that, you know, like the a... Twirling dildos, yeah, that was... Twirling dildos, <laughs> seven o'clock on UTV. <laughs> Two big dicks waving in my face. <laughs> But anyway, that's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, when was the last time you got recognised and like had a you know full conversation with someone? Uh, when we came off the flight, the last time we came off the flight on Sunday and we went to the Denadri Inn to have something to eat before coming on home. And uh, can I say, I-, I hate that. I just want to get home. See when we land, just straight home. But that well, after, after a long. Tr- Tra- transatlantic or intercontinental flight I'd want that but a hop from Corfu like it was only three and a half hours coming back oh right okay so okay. you're all right and uh, we decided we'd go and have something to eat on the way home so we did that and a gentleman got up and he said that he missed seeing me on TV and why on earth had I left and, and I said it wasn't my I'm going to get a laminated sheet saying ITV have taken UTV over. We've left Havelock House. The UTV that we all knew and loved is dead. Blah blah blah. So I I I, I tell people. Not really catching off those. No, no, but I mean it's it's getting the facts over. Yeah, yeah. Because you're standing giving them a whole lecture. Yeah. Before you know, but it's very nice that people say that to me. The personality of so much local TV is just gone now. You know what you should just do? Just say, super injunction. Yeah, well, we'll not talk about those because there's many of those flying about. (laughs) Dave has one. Yeah, Yeah, probably actually don't talk about that. (laughs) But Uh, I want to know what does Julian eat? I can't. What what do you mean? What did you? What do you eat after? Oh, can we? Can we guess after what? I say, (laughs) you know, come home from your holidays. (laughs) What do you? (laughs) I don't know why you made that strange. Do you mean you find it hard to have an idea of what Julian would order in a restaurant? Well, I know now, so I can't say because we went to the club for lunch. What are you saying when I come in from when I come in from a trip? What would I eat? Is that what you? Marmite sandwich and and a. Cup of coffee. All right, Paddington Bear. <laughs> or or, or, or a, a cup of tea. But when you uh, go to the Nadri, what are you eating? Well, we, we hadn't had lunch. It was a, it le- we left Corfu late at about five past one or five, or maybe half one. So we hadn't really had any lunch. I just realised it was, um, sorry, marmalade. Yes, like it was. Had, sorry. Right, but never worried. It's <laughs> perfectly acceptable. Sorry. But but <laughs> sorry. But we had an early breakfast in Corfu before we left, and uh, then I had nothing to eat on the plane except a cup of coffee and some water. <coughs> you know, mm-hmm. easy jet service now. I have to say is excellent now. Excellent, apart from the flights are always delayed. Well, it, the one we were on was delayed because of somebody had been obstrep I've told you that somebody was obstreperous on the outward flight from Belfast no. and the uh, when we got onto the aircraft only it was only half full and we were sitting down and the captain and one crew member was at the police station in Corfu because somebody in on, on the aircraft on the way out had been Obstreperous. Obstreperous. Mm-hmm. I only know that word because yeah. Foy Vance, who was on recently, said it, and then I learned what it yes. is. So now I know what yes. that word means. And that's putting it mildly, I expect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they were they were at the police station sorting all that out. So we sat on it for an hour and a quarter before we actually took off. But I'll give the captain his due. He came on up the steps, closed the door, flicked the switch, and we went. What's the longest you've sat on? On an aircraft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sat on. <laughs> Too dirty beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Mr. Simmons. No, I, 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 I never sit on it, darling. <laughs> Would you, you not, are terrible. In a situation uh, like that, in a flight like that's... what <laughs> situation? <laughs> no, I mean the easy jet flight. <laughs> I mean, when someone's being obstreperous, 
mm-hmm. on a flight or being a fucker, um, <laughs> would you not? Would you not get involved because you hold? You've worked in the airline industry. Yes, people know you. I would only get involved if they the crew asked me. Yeah, uh, you can't that. interfere. Yeah, you can't. I mean, what would you? What would I, your I would reason. I would reason with an obstreperous passenger mm-hmm. and try and see what their problem is. But you see, in the, these days of drugs and alcohol, some people are totally out of it. You can't reason with them because there's no way. Yep. that you're going to get through. But you, you know, I always feel some people react on aircraft generally re- most of the time because they're frightened or upset. Right, and the thing is to calm them down, and that's yep. the, that's that's the way I work. Maybe sit beside them and talk to them for a while, yep. get them a drink of water, and sat sit down beside them and and calm them down. But sometimes you can't do that; they're all all ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine being wiped out in a plane, <laughs> and you think you're all of a sudden Julian appears? You'd be like, "Is this my conscience? What is this? What's happening here?" I would instantly be like, "Oh, I'm scunder. I'm sorry, Julian. I stepped out of line here." Well, you know, I mean, it, it all depends on, on the state the passenger is in. Yeah. If they're being obnoxious and thumping around them. Yeah. Well, then you get the straight jackets out. and. Yeah. Uh-huh. You were, you were um, hosting an event recently uh, with, like, tribute acts and that kind of yes. thing. Um, on the Shore Road, Crusader <laughs> Stadium. Dave's yes. a big Crusader fan, yes. yeah. he claims. Well, I was in that stadium, and it was magnificent. Do you what would you what do you prefer doing in front of a live, live. audience or always live? I mean, doing a camera it's like sitting in front of a Dalek and you're saying something that you think maybe the it'll, and there's no response from the camera and then it's maybe about two days later when you're I seen you, Julia, when you said about horror and it was a pish and all yeah. this. So that, then you get the response, <laughs> but I like the instant response from the S- audience. Speaking of like a response, do you, I, I I don't think I asked you this last time and I wanted to know. Back in the day when you were doing, especially introducing Coronation Street or Emmerdale, the soaps, did any of the actual soap stars ever reference it or were they seeing it? You know, the, the actors who were in England and that's The that gentleman, sort of Charlie Lawson, who played uh, Jim McDonald. Jim, so it is. He, he has said to, me, said to me a couple of times that he, he had seen and knew what I had done. And then, <laughs> that's <laughs> ominous. Yeah, and, I know and, what you've yeah. done. <laughs> so it is. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, calling um, Gail Platt E.T. in in the Anthea Turner wig. Did you do that? Yeah, I did. That's that's what she was like, E.T. in in, in an Anthea Turner wig. And that got back to Coronation Street. Oh, Uh, yeah? And uh, I don't think she liked it, but, I mean, all the others did. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She phoned home about it. Um, There's a picture of Gail Platt that did the rounds years ago, uh, Topless, the actress who plays her. Really? Mm -hmm. Does she have a wee body, like, E.T. as well. Like E.T.'s fingers. <laughs> yeah. um, Do you have it? Huh? Do you have what it? were like E.T.'s fingers? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, You've already offended her too much. Julie, yeah, you can't yeah, get yeah. this. You can't um, get it. But you could get away with more stuff back then, like introducing people I couldn't, like that. Uh, now, couldn't do that now. I couldn't do it now at all, especially after the pandemic. The pandemic has sort of put a, a whole spell over everything and everything's all different. I couldn't say... Because I used to hear people talking about the characters from Coronation Street on the train in the morning. I mean, so, as you know, people believed it really is the real McCoy. Yeah. That it's, it's true life. And of course... It's all acting. Yeah. And so I used to u- lift that and use that in my intros, but I, you couldn't do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'd be hue and cry. Yeah. Um, I think that's what the world needs, Julian. I think they need to get back because Corey's not been the same. You tell it like the way it is. Yeah. The thing is, it's an awful thing to say, but since I've left UTV, uh, I don't see any of the soaps. I don't know what's going on. Don't, I had to watch them when I worked yeah, there. Yeah. Even on nights off, I caught up on, on them. But now I never see them. Yeah. And in a way, it's great, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a favourite soap that you enjoyed watching? Well, it had to be Corey, really. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I liked Emmerdale, and I liked Hollyoaks as well. But, I, you know, that Hollyoaks wasn't mine. Hollyoaks on yeah. an omnibus. Hollywood's on the bus every Sunday. You had poor Deirdre Barlow tortured though, didn't you? Yes. Oh, well, you were all she needed Deirdre. it. <laughs> Deirdre Rashid? Yeah. Yes. Um, Remember she had Samir's kidneys? Yeah. Oh no, and that's Tracy, that Tracy, the daughter had Tracy Barlow. It was you. Yeah, it was you holding the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going up. All she should say when she was younger was, "I'm going upstairs to play my tapes." Uh-huh. That was all. She, then she grew up and she turned into a big whore. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and the evil. Yeah, here's the thing: they wouldn't even let you say that nowadays. No, 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 no. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. God, there'd be a hue and cry. Disgusted at Betty Home. Hello there, is that you, TV? Get that fellow off. He's very bold. What he said. Was there ever complaints about you back in the day? Oh, a couple, yes. Disgusted at Bally Home was one. Quite a lot. Oh. A what? Disgusted at Bally Home. Right. They wouldn't give their real names. Right, oh, right, right. You know. So, see, in that situation, do you? What, how does it go? Do you get brought in, like, principal style, or do they go, listen, Julian, come on? My boss would, uh, uh, towards the end... Smack I, bottom. I had a very nice boss, but he came from England, and he was fairly switched on, but he wasn't completely switched on to the Northern Ireland ethos. And he was concerned about things I said about people in Coronet, but then there was no... Re- nasty response to it but every now and again i would say something that maybe would rattle a couple of cages and mm-hmm. somebody would give off about something but he says we have to be very careful we have to be very careful yeah so i was very careful. we would get told off we've talked about this before we did we did a radio show on radio Ulster called the rave lockdown mm. every week we would get especially towards the end we would get told off quite a bit oh you would of course there's always yeah. that, but people will latch on to that yeah, yeah. and Nearly start a campaign. No, this was coming from in house. Yeah, in house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the Beeb. Yeah, oh. this was the Beeb themselves going, oh, guys. Right. I got a wee bit told off recently for something I said on the radio. What'd you say? Um, I was talking. About, the topic was about someone said, um, "I'm seeing somebody ish, like in a relationship." And the topic was, "So what? What do you need to define a relationship?" And I said, "We need you know a contract, like a ring, that sort of." Shows what what it means. You have like you have wedding rings, you have engagement rings, promise rings. Even when you're running around the school playground, you've got the wee ro- the wee mm-hmm. the wee sweetie rings you get in the Harry Bow. And I said like, and then whenever you get broken up with, when you're a child, someone just comes up and <laughs> eats your ring. And they <sighs> cut that and said that was too. But I was just being innocent. No, you weren't. Yeah, yeah, I was. It was maybe it, it's not my fault that dirty minds exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentioning no names when I was at school, and I was, this was about P. No, this was in the in the big school. So this was form three in the big school, and I was mad on believe it or not a girl at that stage, and uh, I had bought a whole class. Hold on, Julie, what do you mean? Why would that surprise us? Well, are you, are you gay? Of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did Rose Kennedy have a black dress? <laughs> you know, but, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know. Uh, I, I wasn't into girls at that stage, and I, I had got a notion about this girl, and I'd bought her presents and everything. It had gone on for about six months, mm-hmm. and this fa- one day, going into assembly, a girl called Marilyn McKinstry stopped me. I love at the start of this, she yeah. said no names. Yeah. No, but it's not the girl I was involved with. Oh, okay. This girl, she was an innocent party, but she had been given all the gifts I'd given to the girl <gasps> in a box. And she says, Julian, so and so says it's over, and I have to give you back these. So I'm standing in assembly with this box of gifts that I'd given Kidneys. to her, yeah. pinched out of my mother's jewelry box and everything. Uh, and uh, that was traumatic. Gay Imagine how broken was heart. the moment. Just I'm gay now. Imagine That's how it. different no, life no, would have been. Shortly you, after that, I mean, if she, what if she had have accepted all those gifts and it was, you could be married to her? Man, life could have been very different. Yes, but then I would have been one of those Northern Ireland people who's married but is really mm. gay, and you know, there's so yeah. many of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a fact of life that it's a Northern Ireland thing. Do you think so? Yes. Why do you think? Because there's more like repression of. Not get repression, re- no, but religion I think people, and things like that. People are a bit ashamed to admit that because yes. of their upbringing. Yeah. And in other parts of the world, that that feeling isn't there. Yeah. But it's when I arrived in London to work for Air Canada, that's the first time I really felt free. Oh, okay. You know, that I, I, I wasn't under any jurisdiction of being w- looked at. Yeah, yeah. About any of that. But I, we are a wee bit, we're a bit old school, a bit set in our ways, but backward here I think we're about I dead. think we're more worried in this part of the world about what people think in general about anything yeah you know there's there's more and the thing is like you know I can't understand how difficult it would be to come out but mm. anyone I know who's come out maybe a bit later in life or after their teens or something like that the reaction has always been you're going to get some people who are dicks about it but the reaction yeah. for most people is uh, great you uh, know of course, well now it doesn't yeah, matter I, I, in yes, Northern yeah, Ireland yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean say go back even 15 years. I mean, I used to have 
people will want to do an article on me about my wardrobe. We want to do an article on your clothes, Julian. And I, so I would do, get a couple of, and have the photographs taken outside the Europa with clothes and all that. And what's the headlines in the paper? Gay Julian's wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So the, the brand new show yeah, come to yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Okay, Julian's wardrobe. So that I mean that always used out to, soon. that always used to make me laugh. You know that. Uh, it, it, thank God it didn't worry me really. The new Narnia book. Yes, Gay Julian's wardrobe. <laughs> well, we've got the episode title yes. anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you mean like they they were linking your sexuality to things that had nothing yeah. to, nothing do, with to it. do with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that they, at least they thought they were getting it in. They were outing me. They thought, but yeah. I didn't need to come out. Well, I think as well. Oh, you were never in. No, I think there was the, there's a thing of here. Maybe people want to put a label on you, whether it is a religion. Uh-huh. What what side are you? What sexuality? As opposed to just letting people just be whatever they yeah. want to be. No, this is it. But, I mean, things are changing now, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's for the better. Yeah. For anybody in that situation now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Dave, mm-hmm. you have a... Uh... <laughs> you, you okay? Yeah, no, uh, I'm good. I'm you enjoy just... your banana? I enjoy my banana. He really did. That's lying there like an old condom. Look at it. <laughs> Julian, it didn't, it didn't touch your sides. No, it banana. didn't. It went straight in. Mm-hmm. Like a big seagull. Swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julian what have you got coming up bits and pieces I mean there's things in the pipeline and I've uh, uh, I've got to get confirmed I'm I'm d- doing this monthly or twi- twice monthly competition now for Tommy French competitions this is a cushy gig 50 or 60,000 uh, 60, <laughs> uh, 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 and I, I do the draw for that live on the internet mm-hmm. every every Julian's good for a tap at the minute. And mm-hmm. and then we're hopefully going to be doing a lot expanding that greatly mm-hmm. uh, in the new year. And where are you you're travelling for that as well? I, I will be, yes, but I can't talk about it really at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In other words, I'm not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um Dave Elliott. Yes. What mate. have you got coming up, Big Shooter? What do I have coming up? I don't even know. I'm planning a wee tour on my show roleplay. So well, there you are. See, sort of figured out that'll now. be good. So, thank you. And, Thailand. Uh, yeah, Thailand, Bangkok, the yeah. works. Um, but yeah, just working on that and then just, you know, being a serious actor and stuff. He's a serious actor now. Um, can, can we say what you're in? Nope. Ah. No. Nope. NDA signed, so can't say it. Mm. So. But you'll be in Bangkok doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can stream it on the internet. Julian's Gay Wardrobe yeah. Abroad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tommy French competitions. You can go online <laughs> yeah. and the link will be there to yes. my side project. Yeah. Um yeah, I uh I liked our I liked our showbiz lunch a lot. Um you'll be I invited can, next time. Thank yeah. you. Stop. Hurting Have you been on a well, showbiz? Well come here the next time and I'm not doing it unless I'm getting it okay. and you're not putting your finger in your uh-huh. pocket, and neither are you. Whoa. <laughs> and that's all it's about. Otherwise there'd be a big screaming match in the middle of the restaurant. Imagine you're just there having a wee quiet family lunch and it's a big thing. Faces being slapped and people sw- <laughs> sweeping out with the capes blowing out behind them Julian, and the door slamming. When did you lose it last? You don't strike me as someone who loses your no, temper a lot. No, I don't lose it very often. But when often. did you lose your temper last? Oh, I can't remember. I, I, I honestly, I don't lose my temper. I get cross, but I don't see the red curtain and all. No, the last time I ever really lost my temper was... Uh, well, it's ridiculous. No, it was... <laughs> no, it does. It was way back when uh, I was living in England and I had announced to my... I w- walked in one day... Mum had come over with me, and we were we were we were there for a year and two months before I just decided I didn't need to be there. I could commute to Air Canada, and I walked in and told my mum, I, "I I fancy going home." She says, "Yes, I want to go home too." So we got that all or, getting it all organised, and on the day, my mother's dead and buried now, cremated cremated now but she was such a bitch on the day we were moving <laughs> she i was so cross with her and she really i mean i probably drove her mad as well <laughs> but she, she i was and i lost it on that day right just because uh, it's the stress of a move yeah, nothing worse than a move mm-hmm. and she was an ungrateful so-and-so <laughs> uh, and uh, i mean it was all made up afterwards you know and I mean, but that's the, the one and only time where i really lost it yeah i was ready to smash windows and all when did you lose it last 
when did I lose it last night? I lose it regularly, so it's hard to, hard to remember. Did it involve mm. a banana? Oh no, I'm I'm very <laughs> content with him. I've got a mouthful. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about that and come back to me because yeah. I do. I get really. I, I, lo- I lose it in the car a lot. And I hate it, you know, whenever there's yeah. filter lanes or there's guy like the the fellas are out doing the roadworks and they put this and they say it's four hundred yards, there's gonna be three hundred yards, two hundred. See when people nip up and try to get in. I'm and like, nobody ever in. signals that they're gonna turn yeah. right or left. Yeah. Sorry, I've kicked the mic. Uh nobody ever signals now. And that that annoys me. Yeah. You know, but he's He loses a lot, he's got issues. Yeah. I do. The wor- the worst time that I remember really losing it and then I, I Holly was only Oasis about five years ago, and I was and my mum. She had, she had like colic or something at the time, Holly, and um, she my mum got these bottles. She's like this. You give them these bottles. It's like a party shooter, you know. When you put the straw in. Holly's his wife. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so you will use that. She won't choke basically when she's she's having the, the bottle. And party like, shooter. No, like yeah, it, it sort of works that way. Right. It's a bottle. So I made up the bottle, and and they had to shake it, and when I shook it, it just. What like the hot stuff came out everywhere and burnt me, scalded me the milk, and I was like, Oh, oh fuck Lord, this. yes. Then I was Nothing like, worse than hot milk. No, I was like, This fucking. No point grinding over. So then I said to Mom, Look, how do you fix this? It's, it's, and she goes, You're doing it all wrong. Let me do it. So she did it, fixed it, put the lid on. She goes, Right, you shake it. And I shook it, and it just burst everywhere, and I scalded myself. And I remember I fucked the bottle on the ground, and I was so raging, I double punched. My knees with my fists as hard as I could, and I thought I'd broken both my <laughs> and both my fists. It was so sore, and I fell to the ground. And then, uh, you know, when you're crawling around in baby milk, you're like, "This is I need to chill out here." <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So I, I want to see really if I can. It. So we have the, ca- you know, the like the cameras at home. You know, like the ring cameras. Pardon. We have the. <laughs> I'm doing only fans. I have a <laughs> ring camera at the house, and um, is it a ring doorbell or a ring camera? Oh, they're cameras too. Right, and I'm gonna see Sounds if I. Sounds like Fort Knox. Yeah. Oh, I didn't record. That's such a shame. Leaving the house today, I was carrying a lot of stuff, including a travel cup of tea to the car, and uh, you know, you just think the world's against you. Uh-huh. The leaving time, I was faffing about doing things, and then I thought I'd drop my sunglasses, and then trying to catch them, spilt the tea all over my lap, and I thought it was going to be on the camera, so I turned around to the camera, gave it a thumbs up, uh-huh. but. It didn't record. So is, are your cameras it. outside or are they inside too? Oh, only outside. That's okay, because I think it's weird when people have inside cameras. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Personally speaking. Um, I spill things all the time now. Every week here I spill something on clothes. I hope you're okay. And you don't have any like early onset problems. Spillers disease. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think, think I might have ones? something? Yeah. No. But my hands are... Rock hard, you're okay. Hmm? Your hands are fine, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, Oh, here we go. That's the ambulance coming for you, mate. Um, guys, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. As, as always. Yes, thank you. Great jacket, Julian. Lovely to see when guests make an effort and dress up. <sighs> Listen. And Dave. Don't make me lose it. <laughs> <laughs> You're but banging those <laughs> knees again. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fragile, these knees. The Hulk. Um, I'm and you should have the same colour of her yeah um, thank you very much for watching listening to this episode of the TV Me Podcast with Julian Simmons and Dave Elliott thank you very much see you next time